so excited to be surrounded by a cowgirl corner of empowering women. They're from all across the United States, and that's what's going to be fun. We're going to be able to provide a lot of different perspectives on fashion, styles, trends, and even have some real talk along the way. So come on in and join us with Kendall, Maddie, and Marika. Thank you all three for being on our podcast. And I just want everyone out there to get a chance to know you. If they're familiar with you already, they might learn something new. And if they haven't even heard of you, then now's the time for them to learn. So Maddie, let's start with you. Tell us about yourself. Hi, I, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I was really excited about this. Um, I've never done a podcast with th two other girls in it. So I think that's really unique and fun. Um, I am from Southwest Texas. I am, I call myself a first generation ranch wife. Um, I married a guy who is a fifth generation cattle rancher. Um, I was not born in the ag industry or Western industry. And I just kind of, threw myself in full throttle and went for it. And now I help run a cow-calf operation. We have a beef business. I'm a Western fashion and lifestyle influencer. So I feel like I've really taken on the role of the, of the lifestyle. <laughs> Maddie, thank you for being on with, with us here on the Kick Your Boots Up podcast. I learned something new about you every time I think you post something about yourself. So thanks for opening up with us a little bit. And um, let's move on to Marika. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Marika. Oh, boy. Um, yes, thank you for having me on the podcast, too. I'm excited to be here. Um, I am originally from Utah. Um, two years ago, I moved to Idaho with my husband, and we just built a house. And um, I wouldn't say that I was born into the Western lifestyle either. My mom is actually a fourth or fifth generation um, rancher. And then she married my dad, who was a city boy. And um, it was actually my oldest brother that got us back into kind of the ag industry. So I grew up doing 4-H, showing uh, show steers. And then me and my husband, now we have two horses that are old and I'm learning how to ride. He kind of grew up hunting um, and using horses for pack trips. And so, yeah, we're kind of learning to homestead, learning how to, you know, get into the cowboy lifestyle, but um, it's all, all new to me, but I love it. I love that way of life. Um, and I am a Western fashion influencer. Um, I specialize in modest Western content. And so kind of more conservative dressing um, is my niche. And uh, I've been doing this for a couple of years now, and it's it's just grown from <laughs> something really little to something really big. And so um, I influence full time online, and that's my full time job. Wow! 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 The lineup here is awesome. I can't wait to hear about our next girl, Kendall. Let's tell us tell us a little bit about yourself. So that was both really tough acts to follow. Thank you all. Um, like they said, thank you for having me on. I'm so so excited. Um, so hi, I'm Kendall. Uh, I'm 20 years old. I originally and still live, I was born and raised in Stephenville and I'm still there now um, against a lot of people's better judgment. Um, I actually come from a long line of ranchers and cutters. Um, and so that's kind of how I got into the industry. Um, my grandparents showed horses and still show them now. Um, and then my dad rode Bronx. My mom though um, was born in Stephenville and not into the Western industry at all. So I kind of got a mix of as city as Stephenville can really be, um, as well as my dad's side. So that's kind of where my style came from of a little bit of Western and a little bit of flair. Um, I have been influencing for roughly four years now. I got into the industry when I was about 16. So I was one of the youngest. Um, and so that, oh. that uh, was a big learning curve and all the things. So it's been great to be here. Oh, wow. Thank you, all three. Um, I'm sure everyone listening already knows all about you, as do I, but I'm so glad to hear a little bit of tidbits every time. And I think we should just go ahead and get started on the topic of how you guys got started influencing. Obviously, social media was part of it. It was a big deal, but you guys were already living awesome lives, and then now you're able to share your lives every single day. So I don't know who wants to go first, but let's just kind of talk about how your journey of, of getting started influencing in the humble beginnings. <laughs> I can go first since I went first last time. <laughs> um, okay, how I got started, correct? Yes, yeah. Um, so I was actually in music school. Um, I had this big plan to move to Nashville and be like a singer, songwriter, or 
director or something. I just knew I wanted to be in that world. And I met my husband, I was 20 and I was not looking for Like if anybody that knows me very well would be very shocked that I was married or met my husband at 20 years old. I just am, don't come off as that kind of person. <laughs> um, but I just like, I kind of had a little change of plans, obviously, um, with him taking over the ranch that we live on right now in Southwest Texas. And um, so I kind of was starting to think like things are getting serious. What can I do, you know, and like for a job and to like fill my time out in the middle of nowhere. This was kind of before I knew what my life would look like, but we'll get into that later. Um, and I saw, like I, I followed a lot of the OG bloggers like Amber Fillerup and Carol Loren, like in the more mainstream worlds. And so I dating a rancher and a cowboy, I started following a lot of girls like Marika, which is one crazy for me, like me and Marika are friends, but to be on a podcast with her, like life kind of comes full circle. You know what I mean? But I started following like her and Shaylee and, um, at the time, like classic Concha, Hannah Ferguson was one of my favorite people. And um, I just literally, it was back in the days where I was just gotten DMs and was like, hey, I want to do what you're doing. Tell me what I'm supposed to do. And it, that always like mind boggles people um, when I tell them that they're like, really, that's what you did? I'm like, yeah, and now they're all my friends. So um, I think the industry has definitely changed in that aspect, but I was lucky enough to come along where everyone was really welcoming. It was kind of new for everyone, I think. And so, yeah, I honestly just kind of, I was like, well, I can take a good picture and I'm creative and I like fashion. And so, and I, like, I kind of started my whole thing on not knowing what I was doing. And I started with, uh, um, what did I used to call it? Oh, like learning how to be a ranch wife. Like I would make fun of myself and not knowing like how to ride a horse or round up cattle. And so it kind of just took off from there. What a cool story. I have so many questions about that. Like, like now, do you feel like you're a pro? Do you feel like you're a pro cowgirl? I don't think that anyone in the Western world that's honest would ever say that they aren't always <laughs> doing something. Um, I always feel like an idiot. Um, there are some things like I've graduated from like carrying a bucket when we work to like actually like cutting or, you know, like help. Like I've definitely graduated in areas, but if you ask me to name every part on a saddle, there's no way. So, I mean, it, it just depends. I, I should know all of those. And I don't think that I could, if it makes you feel better. <laughs> yeah, that does. It does. It does help me. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about you, Marika? Let's just go ahead and keep the the order. How did you get started influencing? Um, I started, I mean, I feel like it was only four or five years ago, but I guess we're coming up on six years. Um, after I got married, um, I was working at a title company and social media was kind of starting to take off. Like, like Maddie said, influencers started to become a thing, you know, people that you followed and looked up to. Um, and I remember seeing the coyote cowgirl, they did a huge shoot out at some movie barn and they flew in girls from Texas and Oklahoma and California. And they had these t-shirts and found y'all. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I saw that and I was like, I want to be one of those girls. I want to wear the tall boots. I want to wear the shorts. I want to wear the jewelry. Um, <laughs> You know, I had gone to an agriculture school, um, and so I was swing dancing every Wednesday night in college, and so that's where I learned, like, about boots and the difference between fashion boots and work boots and blingy jeans and going dancing, and so I feel like that really, like, influenced me, you know, kind of the college that I went to, and then after I got married, social media kind of influenced me more that I wanted to be a part of it saw the iconic, uh, the coyote cowgirl, uh, photo shoot. And then I had also been on Twitter back in the day. I'm not on there anymore, but like <laughs> that, I feel like I got connected with a whole bunch of girls that way. Like Abby, I cannot say her last name, Fo Fogarty. 
Rock hard abs. It's Arnold. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, there we go. Abby Arnold. (laughs) Um, Like I remember she was on Twitter. um, Brooke Juma was on Twitter. And so I kind of was starting to get to know some of these girls just over Twitter, um, sharing their style. Gypsy Jordy, of course. Um, And just all of those OG girls that I started to get to know on Twitter. I quit Twitter. Instagram took over. And I decided I want to be, I wanted to be a part of that group. Um, well, I'd never owned a piece of turquoise, you know, turquoise, that was a whole new area to me. And so I was intrigued by it that I, I wanted to wear turquoise jewelry, but I couldn't afford the real stuff. So I started making it myself and I ordered in a whole bunch of turquoise beads and I sold a whole, I sold jewelry for when I first got started into the industry. Um, And I called myself Hunsaker Handmaids, and I would make all sorts of different jewelry, Um, lots of just turquoise beads that you could buy from Joann's or, uh, I don't know, Michael's. And I did that for a long time. And then I kind of got into it and I I decided, okay, I want some of the real stuff. You know, because you see a tweet or two that's like, if you don't own the real stuff, you're not cool. (laughs) And I took that to heart and I was like, I want to be cool. I got to have the real stuff. And so... I remember buying my first pair of turk or silver earrings and they were $95 and they were three huge conchos. I think uh, I saw Jenna Knowles wearing them and I was like, I want those earrings. And so I bought those and I was like, I can't believe I just spent $95 on these earrings. That was absolutely insane. (laughs) Um, But that was the beginning to the start of me being turquoise and uh, jewelry obsessed with Western fashion and and I decided, okay, these girls are posting on social media. I can do the same thing. And so I started by brand repping for a handful of companies. Um, and little by little, they'd they'd send me a piece of clothing. I'd post a selfie in it. Um, and little by little, I've been able to grow my brand where they'd send me a shirt or an outfit. And I'd book a photo shoot. And I'd do photos, post it to my social media, tag them, buy this. And I was living just kind of paycheck to paycheck, you know here's this, uh, let's spend all my money to do photo shoots, buy the turquoise, buy all of the clothing. Um, and after so long, this hobby got more and more expensive that I was just like, okay, let's, it's time to make some money doing this. Like I can't keep doing this out of my pocket. And so little by little, I said, okay, can you pay for my photo shoot to the brands that wanted to send me something? Yes. Okay. Can you pay me for my time and my photo shoot? Okay. Now pay me for my time, my photo shoot, and for me to post on my social media. And I've been able to grow my brand that way, but that's kind of how I got started into it all. And you mentioned Twitter, the early days of Twitter. I think Kindle, you kind of got your start with Twitter, right? Was that? Uh, yes, actually. Um, well, do you have any? I don't want to cut her off. No, so that's that's it. Fine. Yeah, You're, yeah. Tell um, us about it. So this I, is funny. Sorry, not to cut it all off, but no, I literally just posted my story like an hour ago. Should <laughs> I get my Twitter back? But I was like. <laughs> I feel like everybody is going back to Twitter. Should I do this? So, sorry. Anyway. No. So, I, so how, my first actual influencing thing was from Twitter, but we're, we're jumping ahead just a little bit. Oh, okay. Um, so, I have always been, my mom was, a, is to this day, don't, she, she's going to listen to this. Don't let me discredit her. Um, Always very, very into fashion. Um, and so since I, I mean, there's pictures when I was little, little bitty and I'm in a fur coat, like the one I had on and <laughs> I've always, always been into it. Well, coming from Stephenville, there's a lot of influencers that are there now, but when I was like 12, 13, 14, obviously I didn't know any of them and no one my age was doing it. Um, but I followed Cheyenne Swoop, um, now Cheyenne Good, one of the OG OGs. And when she was in high school, I think I was probably like going into middle school and she would always wear these like full Western fashion outfits to high school. And I was like, well, if she can do it, I can do it. And so I, I like the picture, if you scroll far enough on my Instagram, the pictures are still there. Um, but I was like 13, 14, and I would get all dressed up for eighth grade freshman year and make my mom take my picture um, on in front of our red door. Our front door was red and I'd wear all her old jewelry and all this stuff. And so that's, I remember like posting every single day. I was like, I have to post, I have to post at noon. I have to post. And all my friends were like, I really don't think it's that serious, honey. And I'm like 14 years old. Like, no, I have to get my Instagram on right now. Um, so I kept doing that. And then um, 
just for like the fun of doing it. I never really thought like, oh, I want to be an influencer because I didn't, back then that wasn't really like a, like a coined term. Um, but I, it like shoots like the coyote cowgirl one. I know exactly which one you're talking about. Um, stuff like that. I was like, I just want to be one of those girls. It was never a money thing. I was like, I just, I just want to be there. Um, and so when I was 16, I used to have 22 inch extensions of jet black hair. Um, I am a natural strawberry blonde. Um, when I was 16, I woke up one day and I said, I want to be red haired. I want to be a redhead again. Nobody else does that. Um, but I did. <laughs> And so I booked a hair appointment and I went from 22 inches of jet black hair to short red hair. And um, some girls were not being so nice on Twitter. Um, and so it kind of drew attention to the fact that like, oh, she had this like dramatic change. And at that point, I, I've i always had quite a, like a pretty decent little Twitter following. Um, and so at that point, it like just drew more attention to it. And um, Riley J Photography actually ended up reaching out to me for, it was a shoot with her, Bees Distress Tees, and um, Highway Hippie Jewelry. And that was my very first shoot. I got spoiled that it was Riley J, my very first photo shoot. Um, and so that was the summer when I was, would have been summer 2019, I believe, if I'm not, if that my math is right. Um, and so that whole summer, I was going all over Texas, all over Oklahoma um, on the weekends to these different shoots. And the way that I would get into the shoots um, is that, and I don't see them as much anymore, um, but people used to do model calls all the time. And so I like followed the hashtag model call. And anytime I saw a model call, whether it was a brand or a photographer or anything, I messaged them and I was like, wherever you are, I will go. And I cannot tell you how much money I spent that summer traveling in gas and I was not I got some products but like there was no monetary like Marika said like all of it was coming out of my pocket um and it didn't dawn on me until like almost like six months later that I was like you know I'm there's a lot there I'm giving a lot of money to this and I'm not really getting anything back um and so about six months later I did my first shoot with Hannah Rule um West Moon Photography and it was actually a wedding shoot. I was a child bride at 16 years old. Um, it was great. It was actually so much fun. Um, <laughs> and after that, I started consistently working with her. She had a whole team of us models um, that she hooked us up with brands and did all the things. Um, and so that's how, that's how I got started into it. I was um, 13 in front of my mom's front door and then I was getting picked on on Twitter. And then it just kind of just then I was a child bride and here I am. <laughs> I love that you threw the child right in. That was very necessary. <laughs> when my mom, when my mom posted the like behind the scenes photo of me and um my husband, fake husband, getting um getting married, she said child bride um on her Facebook. So uh, my mom did it first. <laughs> and you know, interestingly enough that you brought up you're considering getting a Twitter again, Maddie. Um, I I grew up one of the OGs like following all of them on Twitter as well. And then yeah, same thing. Where is my Twitter? I think it's inactive and I don't even remember the password. So <laughs> I think that's really funny too. I actually got like a lot of trouble in high school. Um, some girls, a lot of girls used to make fun of my voice in high school because it was a lot higher than it is now. And so they were tweeting about me and I just like, you know, 16, I like went off and it was like a Twitter, what do they call it? Like a, I don't even know. Then war? Like this Twitter war? Yeah, I don't know. I just decided it wasn't for me and I never had one since. So <laughs> but I feel You're better than me. I did not clap back. I actually still have Snapchat memories of me crying um, the day after I dyed my hair red. And then the next day I am getting packed to go to a Riley J shoot. So it all worked out. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. You were tougher than me. <laughs> It's kind of fun to go back and relive the humble beginnings, but do you guys ever go back and think about what, um, how you used to do things to now? I mean, granted, you guys kind of touched on it a little bit where you used to spend more, obviously now your goal is to make more, but even just like the energy or the, I mean, like the OG Instagram was like, you barely put any words and it was all hashtags. And then now it's kind of not. So let's talk about the changes over time. Like what you guys used to do when you started out, that could be with anything makeup. What, what were your signature things then to now? I know Maddie, you touched on it a little bit, but let's hear more like 
Um, I'm just genuinely curious. And a lot of people out there are probably are too. They they remember the the original days of influencing of like, nobody really knew what it was yet. And you guys kind of helped pave the way. So tell us about that. My eyebrows have made improvement. <laughs> what? My eyebrows have made an improvement since the old days. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope everyone has, right? Like, <laughs> Trends have changed there. For me, like, obviously we've shifted into more of like, I think it ebbs and flows for sure. But like right now, like when I first started, it was, I remember being so stressed out that I couldn't have a, I didn't have a photographer and like, I couldn't take like a, like a posed picture. Like, you know what I mean? Now yeah. it's like, who cares? Like everyone wants disposable picture looking stuff. Um, I think that there's a place for both because I appreciate both for sure but um it's not so much like having a perfect feed I remember I bought a Tezza book if y'all don't know who Tezza is like I use all of her filters for all my stuff and I bought her book that literally teaches you how to like have the perfect Instagram feed and, and now like no one looks at that anymore I don't know so I there's things I miss about it too like um, when I first started, follow Fridays were a huge thing. And that's literally how I got started. Like Hannah Ferguson shared one of my pictures. And then all these girls started following me that had huge followings. And um, I missed that aspect for sure. I think that the it's not as like helping each other out anymore. Um, but as far as posting goes, it's definitely more like people just want to see the real you and in a way that's really nice. But in another way, it's like, okay, well, I'm actually really boring. Like I live on a ranch with my husband and I was like, there's only so much I can show, you know what I mean? And so like, I feel like sometimes the creative stuff gets taken, taken for granted nowadays, which kind of sucks for people like us, I feel like who you know, really take pride in like putting together a shoot or an outfit and taking a lot of time to do that. And it's just like more and more, it seems like people don't really want to see that anymore. And it's frustrating. So I guess there's two, I don't know if I answered the question at all. <laughs> yeah, so, you did. Oh, yeah. No, I know what you're saying though. It definitely feels like stuff now. It's almost fast. <laughs> Like it's all like, you know, I, you remember, and I know we still do it, but planning out the elaborate shoots and the elaborate outfits and everything and putting so much time into these posts. And it is, it feels like the like quick snappy, oh, here's a selfie, like does so much better. And it is a little disheartening of, I'm like, put so much work into whatever it was. And I'm like, y'all like the selfie that much, <laughs> so much more. It, just, it does feel, it feels just faster, I guess. Let's all it makes me feel like we should go back to what was the, not not a not Twitch. It was the one where you like made like collages and like it was like really artsy and creative. I can't even remember what it was called. <laughs> oh, I don't either. It'll come to me later. <laughs> oh, it definitely will. Um, for me, when I think about when I first started and uh, what I do now as far as content goes. When I first started, I was taking a screenshot from a brand that I would rep for. I would take a screenshot of a product, like a t-shirt, and I would post that screenshot on my page. I'd be like, <laughs> go buy this. Use my code Marika10. <laughs> Did How anyone use it? I ever get over that? <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know. In my head, I'm like, well, if people follow a boutique and they post the same product photo and they enjoy that like then they can follow me and I can post the same thing and they will enjoy that too <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> so that's where I came from and even before like I started getting like a larger page I went back and deleted all of that because I'm like this is so cringy like let's just get rid of that so I have no like trace of it you can't find it on my page but that's what I used to do when I first started I was like yeah let's just take a screenshot of the shirt from the boutique that I rep and I'm like go shop at this place discount code Marika 10 like who, who did I think I was <laughs> I don't know so yeah my content has changed a lot you know just because I'm like let's buy the outfit let's model it and then let's post it let's be a little more <laughs> professional
I love this little trip down memory memory lane. This was good for all of us, I think. But um, we're gonna go ahead and get get move on move on to the next thing. Just for time's sake, I could sit here with hour, for hours with you guys, but we got to keep the people wanting what they want, right? So um, let's talk about the tr- you know, we've talked about the trends of of in- influencing and social media. Let's talk about the trends of um, the fashion trends that have changed and evolved around the time. Um, originally, I mean, every I feel like every decade has something, but every year almost has something. So maybe think about back when you started what you were wearing to what you would wear now, and maybe brands and things like that. Yeah. So when I I used to wear headbands like a freak, like with every single outfit, like I'm from New Mexico. And so Marika kind of talked about this, but like turquoise jewelry and like that Southwest feel was huge wherever I grew up, just maybe not in like a Western way. It was just like normal. Um, So I just wore headbands all the time. And it's funny because headbands right now are coming back and I hate them. I hate them so much. Like, I like stare, I go to market and I'm like, no, like I have a huge forehead. I can't do that. Like, there's no way, (laughs) there's no way Um, that for me. And then um, I've personally, this is probably going to upset a lot of people, but I've never been a bell bottom girl. Like they don't look good on me. I'm short. They make my legs look shorter. So that's just something I just can't get behind. They look great on other girls. I just can't do it myself. Um. See, and I was the, I was the one that wore bell bottoms like five and six years ago, and now I don't wear them anymore. Like I've had my time. Okay, ready for the next thing. I never got into the like super crazy bell bottoms, like the like all the different patterns and everything. But I had this one pair of just plain denim bell bottoms, and they weren't too super wide. They didn't have any rips in them. And if I could find them today, I would wear them today for the sole fact that they were the best jeans ever uh but I never got like super into all of like the crazy yeah. bell bottoms you know what I did wear though was um palazzo pants like you would cut the, the bottom off of, off of them and make it into a headband yeah. from them yeah like the silky all the different patterns um yeah I did wear those but I didn't wear bell bottoms <laughs> at all and um yeah I'm really happy I'm such like a tomboy more girl and like casual like I love that like dad jeans are in and like oversized clothing and I love that like I I just want to look like a hobo for the rest of my life I think <laughs> let's just take a minute for the palazzo pants and then even the gauchos do you guys remember <laughs> the gauchos <laughs> I remember seeing girls wear those to church and I was like that's so inappropriate why are you wearing those to church <laughs> I don't know what those are. Is my age showing? What are they? <laughs> Our age is showing. <laughs> For sure. You'll have to look them up. They're shorter They're palazzo like- pants. Yeah. My next question for you guys is, um, I feel like you're all original in your own ways, but is there a trend that you claim that you feel like you're the OG with? And it's okay. You don't have to be humble. Is there something that you feel like you either think in your mind is cute and you want to keep it going or other people have started doing it that you've noticed that you've done first? Oh, my, I think that, yeah, I think Maddie is the original comfy cowgirl. That's right. Yeah. So I was going to say, uh, yeah, I would definitely say I'm the OG comfy cowgirl. If you're listening and you don't know what that is, um, I really just like, if you follow me, I wear like oversized t-shirts and I love baggy clothing, but I like to like make it cute. Like I'm not going to just show up somewhere and look like a hobo, even though I joke about it. Um, <laughs> Like, I, I just love to be comfortable and I'm not like a glitz and glam girl. Like, I, there's definitely those moments where I am, but even whenever I am dressed up to the nines, I'm still like super comfortable. It's more of like a boho type feel. So um, I definitely have coined that. And what I love about that is I have a lot of stuff coming with that for this year also, but small plug. Um, uh, I love that like, girls don't feel like they just have to share like their outfit that they went out in like they can share like their touring outfit like touring outfits can be cute you know or like your workout outfit can be cute like it's all about like any outfit can be cute and comfortable and functional and so that's definitely something that I've pointed in on personally for my brand we all agree on that one I was hoping you would say something about it for sure you inspire me I wish I could dress like you every single day (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, and then there, there's like Marika. I'll just like push it over to her. She's definitely like she said, the more modest fashion, but she always makes everything look so, I don't know, like classy. I was I literally it. getting dressed this morning trying to figure out what pants I wanted to wear with my boots. And I was like, Marika can tuck, Marika's tall enough that she can tuck her pants into her boots and it looks cute and I just can't do it. Can't do it. And I can't do it. <laughs> every time I see you do it, I'm like, I could totally do that. That would be so cute. And then I'm like, she's five inches taller than you. You cannot do that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I promote that a lot. Um, I mean, I don't know if I would say I'm original or that it's an original idea, but it is um, something that I've taken on for my brand. Um, it's kind of just the way that I grew up. Um, a part of my religion and a part of the way that I just live. And so it's it's easy for me because, you know, I dress this way. And so that's what I share. And I, I get a lot of appreciation from people of all ages, which is nice that, you know, I don't I don't just attain to one age group, but I can attain to any age group, um, you know, just depending on what their preferences are on how they want to dress. But everything you see me wear is more conservative, more modest, you know, it's going to work for for any age. And if that's somebody's style, then I'm the perfect girl. And if it's not, then, you know, that's okay too. And, and that's what, yeah. that's what I try and support and promote is, you know, just dress in whatever you feel comfortable in. And that's why I think there, you may not be the original for it, but you're the first like modest dresser that you do it without being condescending or yeah. like Thank aggressive you. with it or, um, I don't feel condemnation or like whatever. It's very inviting and all of this stuff. And that was why I was so drawn to it. Thank you. Yeah, no, I yeah. never want anybody to go ahead. Yeah, for me, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't even like when looking at your stuff and knowing you for as long as I have, I wouldn't even like be like, oh, she wears modest fashion. I would just be like, no, she just, she's just classy. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Would no, I never, I nowadays I think <laughs> yeah and I I never want anybody to feel you know judged and I just whatever they want to wear and and honestly I'm I'm probably jealous of whatever you guys are wearing I was like ah oh, I want to wear that it's so cute you know but it's just things that I choose not to wear but you know I admired on somebody else I was like ah oh, she's so beautiful I just love that so much and you know it doesn't work for me but it works for others and you know I support you tenfold you go girl so I love how real you guys are. And I remember just the other day, Marika, you posted something where you're like, I'm going to wear this dress to the wedding. And then it ended up not fitting. And you were like, you know what? It's too tight. I'm going to change into something else. I love how real you guys keep it. All three of you. I, I feel like this was like a good group to have. Um, but kind of moving on, you, you talked a little bit about tucking your jeans in, showing off your boots a little bit about that. If you guys could design your own pair of boots, what would they look like? Dream pair. Um, like we're talking endless opportunity wild let's get let's hear it let's hear the crazy ideas <laughs> my I love going to my knee. Oh. oh go ahead Kendall no you probably have a more thought out <laughs> complete <laughs> cohesive thought than I do um no I just I love anything with a vintage like vintage style so my boots would be 100% like look like they came from the 1940s probably um or 60s 70s and then I love earth tones. So anything in that, like dark greens, um, like just like sunset colors. That was literally what I told my wedding planner when I got married, sunset <laughs> colors. Um, and then um, probably some like Navajo conchos or something, because I'm from New Mexico. So it'd probably be me, thousand percent. Those sound cool. Those do sound cool. Um, mine they're definitely going to my knee I really I love a really really tall boot um can I steal the rainbow stitching is that an option can I steal oh, the rainbow sure I <laughs> that in my idea um I don't know maybe I want them to I would want them to be like a really fun color like a pretty pink maybe a pale purple with the rainbow stitching and a cutter I, toe. I am a purple boot this year from someone. I just want like a straight purple, really pretty lavender boot. So I'm with you on that. Literally telling Emily today that I needed the purple ropers to crawl out of the archives. <laughs> <laughs> <Eat them back. laughs> yes. 
I'm here for lavender. I think there's a few girls on our marketing team too that are like, yeah, lavender. <laughs> so we'll see what we can do. <laughs> Marika, how about you? What do you, you have a few things going on. So what, what would be your dream pair, dream pair boots? I do have a couple of things going on. Um, I do have a boot coming out um, and it's a pink boot. And so that's exciting. Um, but I don't know when I think about a cowboy boot, uh, I'm with Kendall. I want something that's really tall. Just because I have, I have tall, I have really tiny little chicken legs. And so I like a boot that covers those and, it, you know, you can't see that. And so I like a boot that's really tall. Um, and I don't know, I'm kind of the same way that I like something very traditional, um, something that's going to be classic, that's going to be around for a long time. You're going to buy this boot and you're going to wear it very often. Um, and so mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of my thoughts behind a dream boot. Um, I really liked Maddie's idea too, with like conchos, having something that just as a statement boot has some unique features to it that, you know, it's a boot you, you wear and, and that's the piece. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's, you know, kind of my ideas, but then I have a pink boot coming out. And so that's really exciting to, you know, see that come alive. <laughs> So you guys all do a very good job of um, being different and setting the pace. And, and I see you guys reuse and rewear and, and make them your own every time. So how do you think you guys will wear a pair of boots through all the seasons? You know, like if you get one pair of boot, that's, let's say the sunset colors we were talking about. How do you make them look like a fall boot? How do you wear boots through the seasons? So I am a big jacket girl. Um, that was one of the things that I was going to say for like, I didn't coin jackets. Don't let me get too ahead of myself. Um, but that is something that's like very true to my brand. I've always been a jacket girl. Um, the collection's a little ridiculous. Um, and so, I mean, even if you have like a bright purple or a bright pink, like we were talking about boot, taking that into fall and into winter, I would do that with jackets and then taking it into summer and stuff, um, like fun colored skirts and like just different patterns and stuff and tying it all in. But I wear pretty bright colors year round. So I don't have to mute my colors very much. I would um, just to like go off of Kendall, I think seasons, like I, I kind of have a color palette. Like my colors are like blue, green, um, like orangish, whatever. And I just, I personally just change the, tones of those colors so like darker ones for different seasons lighter ones for lighter seasons brighter ones for springtime but I'm still always in the same color palette and so I mean I think everybody should own like a pair of black white and brown boots personally that should just be you know what I mean just to go with everything but like I there's winter whites and then there's whites for summer like I I think it's more about just owning what you're wearing instead of making the clothes fit for different seasons obviously like don't wear a fur coat in the summer it's hot but as far as boots go I feel like they're that's the great thing about them is they're so transitional you can wear them with everything oh yeah I agree there mm -hmm. yeah and for me uh same thing. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear my boots all year long of all the different seasons. Um, you know, for instance, I have the Clara, the green Clara boot from you guys. Um, and I love that boot. That green is going to be perfect for fall and winter, but also, you know, it will pop with a spring dress, um, during the summer, you know, it's just a cute neutral green is a neutral to me. Um, you know, it's just a good, you can wear with anything. Oh yeah. You guys are all spot on. I, I love the different insights there. I, lo I always love to hear how everyone styles everything too. So thanks for sharing that. Okay. I, I know that we've had so much fun throughout this whole conversation, but now we get to really have a lot of fun. I have a game for you guys to play and um, it's called fashion yay or nay. And um, basically what's going to happen is I'm going to say a term or a few words about of a, something with fashion and you guys can either say yay or nay. And then if you want to elaborate, you can, if not, then that's okay too. Like if you feel fa passionately about it and you need to speak up, just speak up. <laughs> okay. So we're going to get started with the first um, set of fashion do or don't, and it's socks and sandals. My personal favorite, because I'm a grandma at heart. <laughs> No, no. It's not no. <laughs> no, I would say nay as well. I mean, but sometimes like you have cute fashion socks, like those see-through ones with like a pair of like strappy high heels. Those Yo, are cute. I was gonna say, and it's, it's not socks and sandals. And it's I guess it's not socks and sandals. sandals. I don't know. Yeah. I'm so to that, and I respect it, but no. 
<laughs> okay, well, enough said. Let's move on. Um, neons. Yes. Yes. Like super neon? Yay and nay. Can I get can I be an in-between? I want to be like super, super neon. I can't go too bright. I'm really pale. <laughs> I think one 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 statement piece of neon with an outfit. Like yes, don't yeah. wear like yeah, don't wear don't just like rainbow it up, but cool, right on. Low rise jeans. Nay. No. No. <laughs> oh, I nay. Love them. That's okay if you do. <laughs> I used to have they actually got snatched from me I'll be quick um I used to have a pair of vintage Harley Davidson low-rise jeans they changed my mind on low-rise jeans forever and ever they were the best pair of jeans I've ever owned they scampered off somewhere um but they changed my mind on low-rise interesting yeah I just can't do it either you are 20 want to point that out Oh, that's true. We'll we'll ask you in about five years, Kendall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me enjoy it while I can, grandmas. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Bell bottoms. We've already heard from Maddie about these. No. Um no. back in the day, yay, but now probably nay. They had their moment. It's over mm-hmm. now. They'll come back. They'll come back again. But right true? now, I'm no. Yeah, so save them. It was the vibe for the day. It was the vibe back then. (laughs) (laughs) Save them is they will, like you said, they'll come back. But I just wish, I hope everyone listens to this because I just hate them so much. I am so passionate about the fact that I hate (laughs) tall dogs. I just, I'm kind of a tall girl too. And I just don't like the way they make me feel. I just feel different. But anyways. Um, Okay, middle part. Yes. Yay. Yes. Right. Look on. at all. <laughs> I know you're all. I'm a little, I'm a little lopsided. But that's just because my face is a little lopsided. So the part has to go with it. But it's mainly middle. And I, mm-hmm. and I just have to touch my hair at all times. So no one ever knows. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> Hide it. I think I know the answer to this one. Pastels? Yes. 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 It's right. Really you're like the queen of pastels. All this spring, I, I just think springy colors when I think of you. I think of long skirts and springy colors. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's almost springtime in Idaho. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> and I don't have like actual seasons over there. We were talking about transitioning pieces. And I was like, I don't have to transition much for winter in Texas. And I was like, Marika actually has like winter over there. Oh, yeah. I'm just like I came from New Mexico and I have a whole coat closet that never gets used because like yesterday it was 80 degrees here ridiculous mm-hmm. I'm not yeah. jealous of you. a little jealous of you guys so <laughs> what do they say around here if you don't like the weather just wait and it'll change because it, it's so true <laughs> I actually was just texting with Pam Minnick this morning and, she, and we were talking about the weather from Texas to Oklahoma and she said yesterday bikinis today snowsuits <laughs> <laughs> it was so glad it got chilly I wanted to wear this new fur coat of mine that I couldn't validate for anything else than this and it was cold enough. It's, yeah, it's cold here in Texas. And then it was hot yesterday. Yeah, crazy. All right, back to our game. Back to our game. Uh, fast fashion, yay or nay? Nay. I probably nay. shop it a little bit, but I try to be conscious, but just depends on the brand. But yeah, usually nay. It, yeah, same. I, I'm a nay. Like if I could not there's like certain times a year like in a far like I'll go to nasty gal and get like two or three like p- pieces to just like put my outfit together you know what I mean but for the most part my outfit is centered around not the fast fashion part of it so I don't know it just I definitely know. not like I don't know not she <laughs> is nasty gal considered I think I think like she in when I think of like fast fashion, like I got a lot of my NFR stuff from Nasty Gal, if it makes you feel better. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it is considered fast fashion. I just don't think, I think it's an actual, like Shein, I think has a lot of shady stuff going on. So yeah. I think that, yeah, I don't know about Nasty Gal or like, I do Pretty Little Thing a lot, just like it is cheaper, but a lot of them are also in Europe. So they're cheaper, but you pay for shipping, just FYI. <laughs> We have three anyway. more before we go. Um, let's move on to vintage items. 100% yeah. Yay. Enough said. They stand alone. I couldn't agree more. Mm-hmm. Feathers? 
Yes. Feathers. Like fe feathers on your clothes, feathers. Yes. Yes. Maddie says sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then last one, bows on clothing. Yes. Yes, I like them as like, um, like an, instead of a bolo tie, like I like them tied around like a collared shirt. I love that look for sure. I'm mm -hmm. not a big bow girl. I don't like, I, I can't have things too tight around my neck. That's the only reason, like you were talking about, like I, it's cute. Me personally, I feel like I'm suffocating. Even my wild rack is really low right now. I can't have anything. <laughs> well, you guys are all super real, like I've said before. And I feel like you guys are open books. What you see is what you get. And I know that if anyone has any questions about influencing or becoming an influencer, or how to get started, how to build a media kit, they can always reach out to you. So let's take the time now to, to plug ourselves. Let's um, website, social media, whatever you're interested in, whatever you're promoting right now, feel free to speak up and tell everyone where they can find you. Yeah, so I'll go first since I will just keep it in a row. Um, uh, my Instagram is Maddie McCall. It's M A D I and then McCall underscore. And that is like all around Instagram, Pinterest. Um, I'm probably going to get my Twitter back. So, Twitter. Twitter. And then <laughs> on, on my personal Instagram, you can find our beef business and stuff like that. But Maddie McCall underscore is the place you'll find everything else. Mm -hmm. Um, mine on Instagram, my handle is Marika underscore dam. So that's M-A-R-I-J-K-A underscore D-A-M, like a beaver dam. Uh, my maiden name is Dame, but when I made my username, dam was just cooler to say. So, um, that's Which what is it is on knowing you. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I was just a little rebel when I was little, you know. <laughs> Um, and I've then, always said uh, Dom. Me too. I thought, no way she would say damn. <laughs> oh, yeah, damn. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Very uh, cool. That, uh, website? And then on my Twitter, it's uh, Marika Hunsaker, and that's my married name. So I should switch it, but everybody knows me as Marika Dam, Dame, whatever. I always but. said Dam. I always was like, Marika Dam, you know her? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I pronounced it wrong for the longest time. I know I did. Um, I am the Urban Cowgirl with three L's for my personal account because Instagram would not let me only put one L. Um, and having to say with three L's in business settings is not super fun. Um, and then my photography account is the Urban Cowgirl Media with only one L this time. Right on. Well, I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your very, very, very busy schedules. And it's been so fun getting to know your stories. I've learned a lot about you and I feel like I'm leaving with a friend. So thank you for that. And thank you for always just shedding a light on each other and lifting women up. That's kind of what this podcast is about. So we appreciate you guys doing what you do.